Hey everyone, my name is Ramneet and this week I am back with chapter eight of Your Mind is Your Home by Cameron Beatty. Um, chapter eight, the title is also Your Mind is Your Home and the blurb underneath is to create peace in your mind, uh, to have peace in your life. So chapter eight is uh, pretty much the second last chapter here um, of this book. And I think this, this chapter kind of brings it back to full circle um, because after this chapter, there's a little disclaimer, um, which I will cover in a different video. Um, but in chapter eight, he talks, um, he places a really important note on mental health. And he's saying that your mental health matters. Um, you know, and th throughout the book, we've been talking a lot about um, your thoughts are who you are um, and how to kind of take action and when to take action. And his book has been very, very eye opening for me. Um, I feel like in our day to day life, we don't, we are not mindful enough of our thoughts. Um, and that's normal because. Um, our day is busy and we have home, we have work, we have sometimes, some of us have school um, while we're doing all of these things. So it's a lot, it's a lot we're taking on our plate. And with taking on a lot means that there's a lot of thoughts. And sometimes that those thoughts can overpower um, our physical environment. So I would say I've learned a lot from Cameron Beatty's book. I think this was a very great intersectional author who um, you know, was able to kind of talk about uh, anxiety from his personal experiences as well. So I would really recommend um, if these videos have been insightful to you at all, or um, maybe I haven't been able to provide um, a lot of detail about each specific chapter and each specific page. I have been able to take out uh, bits and pieces from the chapters, but I would really recommend for everyone to give a thorough read to this book um, and pick what works best for you, right? So um, maybe some of his digital tricks don't work for you, but maybe some of his mindfulness tricks work for you. So um, it's really just what works um, in, your, in your life. So chapter eight, he says, um, you know, making a hair appointment for a, a cut, a color or a blow dry just seems to happen so naturally. And for some with great emphasis on maintaining the perfect set of locks. Um, every burst water pipe in your home can call for immediate action and attention so that your comfortable home doesn't get water damage. But he says from the people that I've had initial consultations with to the people that I've coached, there is a general resistance to taking action on improving one's mental health. And he wonders, how often do you work on your mind? How often do you book uh, an appointment for a professional therapist, practitioner, or coach to help you with your mental and emotional health? How often do you implement the tools and resources from the hundreds of self-help books that are written by experienced professionals that can help you improve your life? Do you spend endless time stuck in the problems of your mind and not investing in the possible solutions? So this page 222 um, really, really resonated with me uh, because I would be the type of person that would um, be quick to book that massage appointment or um, you know, my hair appointment or whatever it was. But for some reason, there's still a lot of stigma around therapy and psychotherapy and getting your own therapist. Why is it okay to say I have to call my doctor? And why is it still not okay to say I have to call my therapist? You know, so there's, I know we've come a long way with mental health conversations um, in the turn of the century, but I feel like we as a society have a long way to go to um, be able to implement that and, and kind of normalize it. And so he says, when are you going to take action? And um, part of, one of the things he really, um, kind of the, the point that he drives home here is that there are some things that it takes us um, a second to do. Sending a text can take us a second. Um, you know, riding a bike or even how to drive. These are things that come very natural to us now, but they weren't 
they weren't natural to us always. There's, there are things that we have had to learn. They have, there are things we've had to master. And it's with, it's with this same, uh, it's the same with learning a new language, a new sport or skill. And it's the same in learning how to use a new social media app. So you learn, you practice, and then you put the time in. And this is the same requirement for you to work on now to take control of the state of your mind and the content that you allow to play out within. He says, this is important for the simple reason that your mental health matters. Summer bodies don't transform overnight. Learning to meditate doesn't get mastered in an hour. The only thing that might guarantee a next day result is an Amazon Prime order. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> if you want to improve your mental health, if you want to think and feel better, and if you want to live more comfortably in the home of your mind, you have to take action today, tomorrow, and the rest of your life. So there's a quote here on page 227, and it says, you will each and every day be met by your thoughts, and you'll also find yourself in the company of your thoughts as you lie in bed each night in saying that you won't really ever be alone. So there are two things he mentions in this chapter. Um, mindfulness work. He says mindfulness is a great um, technique to be able to really allow us to control the people in our head, the fear that, um, that goes on as we binge watch, the relentless self-doubt that we talk ourselves through. Um, and you can very easily swipe it, filter it, mute it, block it. Um, but these interventions only work if you do the work. So um, mindfulness is something that he really uh, drives home here. And then he also says, um, my direct and immediate, if not blunt, question at the start of the book asked you to consider, what would you be left with if you practically lost everything? And he says, this question wasn't to make you think about a disaster in your life, but to make you realize that you are what you think you are. And life is based on the labels and titles that you define life by through your thoughts and beliefs. So choose not to reflect on all that you would lose, but more on what you could actually gain. For you may in some degree lose the objects, people and values that you attach to those items. However, you will always have your mind. Life will always be a journey each and every day through highs and lows, love and sorrow, and everybody feels and everybody thinks, but not everybody finds ways for how to cope. That is chapter eight of Your Mind is Your Home by Cameron Beatty. I will be back again next week to read the last little bit and discuss um, the disclaimer that he puts at the end of his book. Uh, which I like to call chapter nine, but he has not labeled that as chapter nine. So um, I'll be back to read the disclaimer. Thank you, everyone.